here with the cat image, I have a background layer and only the background layer. And uh, a background layer has special characteristics. So for example, if I try to move it, I can't. The layer is locked for movement. If I erase it, uh, you can see it's erasing to white. That is because white is the background color. You can see that here. Now undo that. If I switch the background color to black, then it erases to black. Not transparent, but whatever the background color is. Uh, layers, um, again, with an image format like a JPEG, which is usually the default for most, uh, most digital cameras, unless you're, you have it set to take raw images. Uh, it's always going to have a background layer when you bring it in. Um, if you want to make it a regular layer, just double click on it. You can give the layer a name. And if you want, you can also give it a color. It doesn't really matter if you do or not. And now I can see I've, it's no longer called background. It's got a color on the icon over here in the layers palette. But in addition, now when I erase, it's not going to erase to the background color. It erases to what's known as the transparency grid. So whenever you see one of these little checkerboards, it means that that area is transparent. So rather than, if I were to print this image now, rather than showing the checkerboard, I would just see that as paper white. Now, uh, what that means, I'm going to undo that for a moment. What layers mean in terms of working in Photoshop is it, it becomes a way to isolate elements of your, your image. So for example, um, if I want to maybe add, uh, add a little bit extra to the image, say I wanted to kind of maybe add some red or something like that, I could go in, go to the foreground color, Pick the red I want, and uh, the paintbrush tool is active. So here, I'm just adding, you know, a few elements to my cat. What I've done though is draw directly on the cat layer, so I can't really undo that. Well, I can do it, undo it right now by using the Command Z key. But I've, if I leave it like that and do something else, then I permanently um, kind of messed with those pixels underneath. I'm going to teach you a second undo command, which is command option Z, which allows you to go back more than one step. And you can also undo from the edit palette up here. So what you would normally do, rather than drawing directly on the cat layer, or whatever you're doing, create a new layer. Um, I'm going to call this red because I'm just putting some red on it and use that red layer to go in and, and draw. So why do this? Now, um, if I turn off visibility on this red layer, I can see that my original image is still there. And whatever changes I'm making are not kind of affecting that underlying image. So if I make a mistake on this layer, say I accidentally color in one of the eyes with red, if I don't like it, I can uh, just go in with the eraser and undo that without affecting the cat underneath. Uh, in addition, I can also use this as a way to kind of create uh, stylizations. So here, say I want to take that red and I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to use it to replace the cat eyes underneath, but what I want to do is kind of create a blend. So I I can control the opacity on that layer over here in the layers palette. And I can use that to kind of, I can still see the eyes, but I can also see the red. And if I don't like the red at all, I can just turn off visibility, or I could just drag it to the trash can here and completely get rid of it. So layers are powerful. They allow you to isolate uh, sections that you want to work on without so that you can do a lot of different stuff without kind of permanently um, changing your original image if it comes from a film or a photograph. So uh, what we're going to do is just 
quickly kind of go over the layers palette. And here you can see my cat layer. Um, I'm going to add a couple of other layers just so that we, we can look at things. If you add type, um, I'm going to make this uh, white, I think. So I've changed the foreground color to white, and it's changed to white here in the tool options. One, my type, um, well, mirror pro regular, and 150 pixels will so be quite big, but that's fine. So if I click here and type in cat, you can see that it has created a new special layer called the cat layer, called both here, because it with a type layer, it automatically creates an, a new layer for you. I'm also going to create a shape layer. So I'm going to click on the shape tool. I'm going to create a circle. I want it to be red, so I'm going to click in the foreground color, change it to red. And I'm just going to draw a circle. Actually, maybe I'll um, position it over here by the cat. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can just kind of drag that as I'm drawing. OK, so that's perfect. Hit return. It should be in place. So now um, you can see a couple of things about layers. They're hierarchical. That is, what's on top in the layers palette is what's on top of the image. So we created a type layer, but we can't see that word at all because the ellipse is on top of it. I can turn off visibility of layers just by clicking that eye. So I could have um, either just the ellipse visible, just the text visible, or just the cat. And if I want to rearrange elements, um, I can do that just by clicking on the layer I want to move and dragging the layer order to change that. So now I can see that I have my text, I have my circle, and I have my original photograph. Now, uh, much like with the red ellipse, if the cat layer is on top, we're not gonna see any of the other layers because the cat layer has pixels everywhere, so it just blocks things out. Um, if this were the, uh, an original background layer, it would have to be on the bottom because you can't. It, the background layer is always on the bottom. So regular layers support transparency. That is, any place where there's not text on the type layer, we can see what's underneath. Any place where there's not uh, red pixels on our ellipse layer, we can see what's underneath. So for those, they automatically created new layers when I created those objects. If I wanted to just kind of go in and paint, um, I have to create a new layer myself by clicking this little layer icon down here. And now I'm going to just make this say blue, so it's a different color. Be a, more of a kind of a light teal blue, something. Uh, so I have a paintbrush selected, and again, I'm just going to go in and create um, some accent colors here. I mean, not great, but you know, you get the idea. So for example, what I could do if uh, I wanted this color, but I didn't want it to, you know, necessarily be the kind of drawn element it is. Again, remember, I can change the opacity of a layer. So again, um, I can create new layers. All I have to do is, uh, you know, click on this icon down here. And if I want to get rid of a layer, just select it so that it's the active layer and click on the garbage can. I'm not going to do that just yet. First, um, I want to show you uh, how to rename a layer. And here, um, it's layer one. It's a default name. Just double click on that name and type in what you want the new name to be. I'm just going to call it blue. So. The other thing I just want to kind of look out at briefly while we're looking at the layers palette um, is the kind of organizational tools that you have here. Now, um, to work on a layer, it has to be selected in the layers palette. So I have no layers selected and I go to paint, I get a warning. Uh, but if I only want to see certain types of layers, 
in the layers palette at any one time, I can make changes to that. So here where it says kind, this is where you control that. So if I click on the first one, icon, this is the uh, pixel layers. So it's a filter for pixel layers. That means it only shows layers that are based on pixels here. The next one is a filter for adjustment layers. We don't have any adjustment layers, so nothing shows up. The next one is text layers. So only text layers show up here and shape layers and so on. So if there are no layers that match that kind of layer, then nothing's going to show up. And I'm only showing you this because eventually you're going to hit one of those by accident and not be able to find your layers. And that's why. Just make sure you check that. Okay, so to get rid of a layer, again, just click on the trash can when that layer is selected and it's gone. So a couple of other things about working with layers. You can also link them. So if I really like the way that uh, cat, the word cat looks on that red circle, I can, and I want to keep them locked together so that I know when I move one, I'm moving the other. I can do that a couple of ways. I can just, every time I want to move them, I can just make sure I select both layers and you can do that by holding down the shift key and clicking on both layers. Now I can move them, they move together. If you uh, don't trust yourself to always remember to do that, or you want to avoid accidents, highlight both and then click the little link box down here. And now you only have to have one selected and they, they move together. Now the other way you can do that is to create a group. So there's a folder icon down here. First, let's just um, unlink them. So let's just click there to get rid of the link. Uh, click on the folder icon. I'm going to call it uh, this is the logo group. So I want the cat and the ellipse to both be in there. And now I can collapse it if I don't want to see it. But if I want to move them together, all I have to do is click on the logo group and I can they stay together. So three different ways of doing the same thing. This can also be helpful to use these folders if you, know, you have a really large number of layers in your file and it happens and uh, you don't want to you've, you're done working on the logo part and you just want to see see the layers that you still need to work on here okay so uh, the other options down here this is where you would add an adjustment layer we'll go over that later on and this is for layer effects or layer styles i always call them effects because they're called fx in the drop down menu here um, and layer masks. So those are all things we're going to look at later on. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at in terms of layers is just uh, you can lock layers. So if the logo is perfect, you want to, don't want to accidentally do anything else to it, click on the lock button. Well, that is highlighted. And now if you go to move it, it's locked. You can't do that. Uh, in addition, um, you can unlock it at any point in time just by clicking the lock again when it's highlighted. So I don't want to overwhelm you with the information and I think this is probably enough for one video. So we will come back and look at more in Photoshop later on. For now I just want to kind of go over one last thing and that is saving your document when you're done. So saving a file with layers. Um, this was initially a JPEG file. So when we go File, Save, uh, if you want to keep it with layers, and layers is selected down here, it's not going to save as a JPEG because JPEGs don't support layers. So it's going to save as a .psd, which is a Photoshop document. And that is a file format that supports layers. Consider it your working file format. Um, anytime you're kind of building an image, you're making changes, this is what you want to save it as. You will still have your original JPEG. And if, wherever you're going to use this image next, you might want to, 
you know, export it when you're finished as a different format. Um, sometimes you, you can use PSDs, sometimes you can't. But for now, um, saving it as a PSD means if we close the file and then reopen it, you can see the two files are there as an option. It is going to give me um, exactly what I had before. So my group with my logo in it and my original cat photo.